Good morning, everyone. It's another day that the Lord has made. It's another opportunity we have to rejoice in the Lord. Just remember, every day is a new beginning, a new beginning in which we can glorify and praise our Savior because he's the one that brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. So it's a pleasure for me today to share with you what the Lord has laid on my heart. And so I want to begin this message just by asking you a question. What is your perspective on life? Well, tell me, how do you see life? What do you value most in life? And what does life really mean to you? The Bible records in James chapter 4, verse 14, James asked this question. He said, what is your life? Is it even a vapor that appears for a little while, then vanish away? King Solomon, who is one of the kings of Israel, he took a long look on life. And his, his perspective on life was this. He recorded in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 14. I have seen the works that are done under the sun. All is vanity and vexation of spirit. In other words, what he was saying, all of is meaningless and it's like chasing the wind. There is nothing on earth more important than perspective. The way we see things can divide or unite us. It makes enemies, friends, and lovers. Everything we do or say is a result of our perspective. To define perspective, it means a specific point of view in understanding or judging things or events. It's the ability to see things in a true relationship. There are two constant mistakes we make concerning our perspective. The first is that we believe that our perspective is the only and legitimate way. It's strange to us that someone might see things differently and we dismiss them as foolish or as evil. The second mistake is that we think our perspective is natural. We think we just see things as they are because that's how they are. We fail to understand that our perspective doesn't occur to us in a vacuum. Like it or not, there are things that influence or even define our perspective. So I want to point out to you today two tiers of influences and then one definitive factor that shapes how we view the world around us. The first thing that influences our perspective is our family or origin. When we are born, our parents are the gatekeepers to our perspective. They guide us into the world and explain what is shameless and what is heroic. As we grow, siblings and close friends help shape our perspective as well. The human brain continues to develop throughout the late 20s. During that time, patterns of thinking are developed and these patterns are formed as behaviors are rewarded and punished. Concepts are reinforced or shut down and viewpoints are encouraged, berated or dismissed. The second influence is the culture around us. When we enter into adolescence, we start to look for our own way in the world. We rebel against our parents while still holding on to most of their patterns, but we want to experience what else is out there that we can get into. As we lean into popular culture and the, and the social uh, dynamics of our environment, we are, we are presented with a second tier of influences. Are we to trust the patterns our parents have instilled in us or do we trust the influences of our environment? We cannot escape the influences of family and culture. It surrounds us, it screams at us, it begs us to conform. But in the end, there's just one definitive factor that solidifies our perspective, and that is our choice. Everything around us is a guide, a helper, or a hindrance. It all exists to influence the choices we make. In the end, however, we cannot escape or avoid choosing our perspective for ourselves. So I ask the question, what is your perspective on life? We make our choices so quickly and so constantly that we are scarcely aware that we are making choices at all. 
our, our perspective just comes to us. It's an item of clothing we drape ourselves in every day, almost completely unaware that if we so choose to, we could wear something else. It takes courage to take uh, responsibility for our choices. It's easier to let the influences slip by us than to own the fact that we are influencers, first over our own perspective and then in the lives of others. Dr. Morris Massey from the University of Colorado, he taught a series on what you are is where you were when. He pointed out that the generational differences, our geographic location, and cultural differences shape our perspective on life, and we made choices based on those. Well, let me shift for a moment. A natural perspective, perspective is based upon our life learning. Our spiritual perspective is based upon the Word of God and our relationship with the Lord. Moving from natural influences to the spiritual influences. One is temporal and one is eternal. For God does not tolerate shared allegiances. The Lord said in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, For I call heaven and earth to record against you this day that I've set before you life and death, good and evil. Therefore choose life that both you and your seed might live. Joshua 24 and 15, Joshua said to the children of Israel, Choose you this day whom ye will serve. So I want you to take a close look at how you see life, naturally or spiritually. And let the choices you make come from a spiritual perspective to be led by the Spirit of God. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Paul was teaching the church at Colossians because they were caught up into idolatry. Their perspective was founded in idol worship. So he says this, since you have been risen, or since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, Set your sights, set your point of view on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in a place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not of the things of the earth. For you died to this life and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's the New Living Translation. The King James Version says this. If you then be risen with Christ, set, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections or set your perspective on things above and not on things of the earth. The New International Version says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart, or again, set your perspective on things above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your mind, again, your perspective on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden in Christ, in God. Think about the influences of your life. Think about what's important to you. Think about your life. Keep it in mind what the scripture says in Matthew 6 and 21, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So I encourage you to change your natural perspectives on life to a spiritual perspective perspective. Hear what God is saying to you. Seek the will of God for your life. Let the word of God guide your life. Take time to serve others. Rejoice in your relationship with the Lord. So I, let me present to you several questions for you to think about and ponder on the next few days. What does it look like to have an eternal perspective? What habits or practices are you engaged in that help you redirect your attention to God's promises? And how often do you focus on these things? So keep in mind, if you would, to keep the main thing the main thing. Live a blessed life <clears throat> by living according to the word of God and let your perspective on life be patterned after the will of God and not after the will of God of man. So let us pray. Father, I give you glory and praise for this day. Ask you to pour your spirit into your people across this land, across this state, across this country, across this world. I pray, Lord, that your covering and your hand of protection be upon them. I pray, Lord, that they 
continue to seek you and to know you, Lord, for who you are, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Healer, our Friend, our Lover. God, I pray, Lord, that everyone come into a relationship with you through the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, that they can mount up with wings as eagles. They can run and not be weary. They can walk and not faint, knowing that you are the great God and beside thee there is none other. So let our perspective, dear God, be focused and channeled on you, Lord. Because what the world has to offer does not compare to the glory that shall be revealed in us when we look to you. So, Lord, we pray your will be done in the hearts and minds of your people everywhere. Lord, hallelujah, that our outlook on life will be just to glorify and to praise you. Lord, as you say unto us, well done, and as we enter into the kingdom that's prepared for us. So, Lord, remember us, protect us, keep us, Lord, from the hands of the enemy. And, Lord, from this pandemic that's uh, impacting the world around us. We thank you for safety. We thank you, Lord, for your protection that's upon us. And we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God and amen. So today, I thank God for you. And I want you to remember to keep honoring, keep serving God. And let God be the head of your life in all things. And let your perspective on life be focused on the things of God. So have a great day. And I'll see you next Sunday. Blessings to you. <music>